Hello and welcome to match number three of the Winning Agenda's coverage of a Theros Beyond Dref Death traditional draft. I have not said that correctly once, I don't think, in one of these video intros. Um, we were successful in game one, unfortunately the video coverage dropped out um, in the first game, but here we are about to start game two, uh, having been successful in game one against our opponent Biogenic. So they were playing uh, a black-blue deck where they ended up milling themselves um, with things like Towering Wave Mystic um, in order to get cards into the bin and then try and leverage Sleep of the Dead to tap down our creatures. Um, we didn't see many creatures other than Underworld Rage Charger, I think it is, the, the three cost 3-3 three, three that um, escapes with counters on it, uh, as well as the... Uh, blue black 2-1 that can mill, its, mill your own library and then um, get plus one plus one and become unblockable. Neither of those are particularly amazing targets for port into betrayal so I'm not really tempted to bring that in. Um, but given how few creatures they had and given what I was saying about uh, the fact that this is probably better than the third rage hound, I think we'll bring it in. I'm not actually sure about cutting the rage hound though because I didn't see heaps of creatures. There was a Maya Triton, which I'm totally happy to trade with with the rage hound. Um, but I think it probably still is rage hound that comes out. Like Stampede Rider, I think is still better overall. Um, <laughs> It's better than the third Rage Hound anyway. Um, yeah. So let's go with that. It was another nice hand with um, Elspeth Conker's death as well, in a way that was a little more relevant and useful uh, when our opponent wasn't removing so many cards from our bin from the game. Uh, so this one's okay, even though we haven't got the planes. Hopefully we draw them before we get up to six. Uh, and it's got a decent curve. And keeping in mind what I said in the previous video about the difference between mulliganing in a traditional draft versus a um, a ranked draft where it's best of one matches and there is kind of a hand smoothing technology in place, uh, I think I'd rather go with this as a keep. Um, so at least we've got a five that we're going to be able to play, assuming we get up to five mana regardless of whether we get a little unlucky and draw all mountains. So we don't want to draw any more mountains, really, from this point on. Um, a planes would be an okay draw here, but a four drop would also be nice at some point in the next couple of turns. So there we go with the planes. So we get in there with the Rage Hound, see what happens. We've also got Fateful End to remove a blocker if it's a Threnody Singer or something like that. So nothing doing for them. And then we'll just deploy the, the Rider of the Stampede. Underworld Ragehound, uh, not the sort of card that I usually love in draft formats. I'm usually not super into things that attack each combat if able. Um, but I did love things like Madcap skills, to be fair, in, the, in um, Gatecrash, because once things get powerful enough and efficient enough, um, you kind of don't really care about the fact that there can be a little bit of downside if you run out of gas, because if you don't, it's just so powerful. Um, if they want to trade for the Rage Hound here, I'm, I would normally be happy for that. But I think given curve considerations and pressure, I think I actually just want to get rid of this thing. They've got the Unsummon, which we might run into. Uh, actually, let's take the planes. Uh, I'm always loath to to land on top though. Uh, I think we can do without it. I think we really, we really want to hit his Furious Rise here. That m decision may come back to bite me. It was really close, but given we've got two other lands still in hand, the thought of putting another land on top, if we then drew two planes in a row, I just feel so miserable about it. Whereas if we draw... As long as we don't draw a mountain, I'll be okay. <laughs> now. Um, well, <laughs> sometimes the universe just laughs at you. And I should have played the Heroes of the Rebel before combat. That is a significant error. That's a... Oh, 
a damage that we're missing out on. Hmm, <clears throat> gotta stop playing so quickly, making these errors that I pick up a split second after I commit them. So I'm gonna keep the Nyad on the board. Okay, fair enough. In some ways, that may have been okay in the way that it worked out. Presumably they're now gonna unsummon one of our creatures. It might be the Heroes of the Revel, which is gonna make me feel a little mes less miserable about my decision to bottom the planes because I'm going to have to play this again next turn anyway. Okay. Our Satyr's not doing heaps with the exception of... Um... Alright, well, there we go. It's lucky that we put that planes on the bottom. It was just such a smart play, wasn't it? Uh, so we get in there with the team. Archon has no targets at the moment, but who knows what could come in the future. Nope. Okay, no blocks. Well, there you have it. That was a strange old match, uh, but we are victorious. We'll be back with the fourth match in the draft very shortly. Um, thanks for watching. I've been Jesse Marshall for The Winning Agenda.